All right, so letters of recommendation for your WAF packet. Uh, you have to have a minimum of three and a maximum of six. Um, what the optimal number of that is, I've heard always go for six. I heard three is the best. So uh, I don't know. Get as many. I, I would personally get as many as you can. Uh, it shows that you're not. I don't know. I'm not on the board, but to me, it shows that you're not cutting corners. Um, and, although saying that, I only got five. So, um, but yeah. So I think you should do letters of recommendation first, just because this is. Uh, you can control when you start this, but you can't really control when you're gonna get them, right? So you ask your boss or you ask, uh, you know, whoever you think is gonna be able to um, represent you professionally and personally. Uh, well, a, a boss that you get along with well is is a good idea. I'll I'll put I think yeah. So I'll put uh, my letters of recommendation in a link on the description below. Uh, just so you can you can see what I got um, from my bosses. So I got um, let me see here. I got one from my like in my immediate supervisor. Uh, so I worked for the Alaska Wildlife Troopers uh, before this. So I got one from my immediate supervisor. I got one from my lieutenant. Uh, then I got one from I was a volunteer firefighter. So I got one from my fire captain. And then kind of as a Mostly as a filler, I guess. I got one from my old college swim coach. I don't know. I just put it in there. Uh, but the one that I think that really uh, maybe even just got me accepted on that alone, I got um, I got one from the uh, chief warrant officer of the aviation branch, um, which was a it took a lot of networking and uh, and I'll talk about that um, to get. So as a civilian applicant, you don't have to. You don't have to have a letter of recommendation from a senior aviator. Active duty guys do, um, and that's the chief warrant officer, chief warrant officer three or above. As a city, you don't need that, um, but I highly recommend it. Um, now that being said, <laughs> and I know I'm kind of going back on what I said, if you want to wait uh, before, you, so you should definitely get uh, one from your boss, one from longtime family friend, or what have you. Whoever you can get good letters of recommendation from, people that know you, people that know your work ethic, um, and that are in some sort of, uh, you know, fire captain or, or um, a, a organization that you want, a kind of a professional setting that you work, that you're involved in, I think would work really well. Um, but so that being said, with the with the senior aviator, I highly recommend you try and get one. And it's it's interesting how it works in the military, you know, coming from. From the civilian side, you know, when you when you put a letter of recommendation in, typically come from somebody who's known you in a professional setting for at least a year, probably two of the more the better. Um, but when it comes to the to the to the senior aviator um, deal, it's really <laughs> I think it's all about rank and status. So this guy, uh, if you get one from a CW five, it's better than a CW four. Uh, if you go from the chief warrant officer of the aviation branch, it's going to be the best, I think, personally. But, <laughs> um, but so that being said, you might want to hold off um, on asking and how you ask. I'll go into how you ask. I mean, oh, I'll just say it now. So, uh, it was so for me. The process was interesting. I moved. I actually moved. I lived in Alaska, and I moved my myself uh, down to Alabama to Fort Rucker uh, to try and network there um, with uh, with a pilot with some pilots I figured I'd go to the home of Army aviation uh, that's where I'd have the, the highest chance of meeting um, a pilot and and trying to get them to write me a letter of recommendation because basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, probably through your recruiter that'll probably be the easiest way to do it um, but if not, honestly, just making a phone call uh, to an office and saying, hey, I'm an applicant for, for I'm a WAFT applicant, and I would like to get a, rec a letter of recommendation from a senior aviator, and uh, I'd like to sit down for an interview with, with somebody to see if I can get, uh, if I can have them write me a letter of recommendation. And that's what's going to happen. Um, so for me, it was a little different. So I moved down to Alabama, and I was really, really lucky because... Uh, as I was looking for places to stay, 
uh, one of them, the landlord was actually an instructor for Rucker. I got buddy buddy with him, who buddy buddy him with somebody else, and that person put me in contact with the chief warrant officer of the aviation branch. Um, and then, but then at that point, then it's it's all the same. So I got a meeting with him, uh, basically an interview. I mean, it was a preliminary interview where he just wanted to meet me. Uh, this is how it's going. I assume this is how it's going to be with any senior warrant officer. And then uh, he talks to you, gets to know you a little bit. Why do you want to be an RV aviator? So this is why I say if you want to wait on the senior aviator letter, of rec if you're going to get one, I'd recommend it until you've gotten most of your packet done. And in fact, um, for the guy who wrote it for me, he didn't, he didn't want to meet with me until my packet was 100% complete. Uh, he, his was just kind of the the cherry on top type of thing. And that might be the same. I would assume it's the same uh, with any uh, senior warrant officer letter. Um, if you're going to try and get one, just wait until the entire packet is complete. Tell your recruiter, okay, now I want to get a letter of recommendation from a senior aviator. And then take that whole packet to the senior aviator. And that way he... Because he doesn't know you, that way he can he can look through the packet, get an idea of who you are, see you face to face, um, ask you the hard questions that he wants to ask, and um, and then he'll write you a letter of recommendation. Um, and, and that's that basically how it went for me. Uh, he asked me some pretty interesting questions, uh, you know, uh, and I may I might make a video if you guys ask for it. Uh, on how that interview went and uh, and how you could possibly prepare for it, um, but but yeah. So letter of, of recommendation. The takeaway here is get them early, get started on them early because you can never control how fast the person's gonna write them, um, and uh, try and get them from a professional organization or work setting, uh, and definitely somebody that's known you for a while. And then if you want to wait until your packet is complete for the letter of recommendation from a senior aviator, which I highly recommend you get. Um, you should do it. Wait until your packet's complete, then go to a senior aviator and, um, and ask for another letter of recommendation there. So minimum of three, maximum of six. Pretty self-explanatory. Hey, sir or ma'am, I would like a letter of recommendation. Uh, I'm sure this is not the first time you've asked for letters of rec, so. This would be the first thing I I, uh, I would do in my packet, and uh, again, all in hindsight. So, yeah. So get on those letters of rec. Uh, the next video I'm gonna post uh, probably be education documents. That's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll talk about that in a little bit.